I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and even, dare I say it, thrive through the reset that frankly, it should be pretty darn obvious to everybody that we are already walking through. And today we're going to take some questions from uh, clients that are working with our consultants. So these are consultant supplied questions. And I'm gonna start with Sari and CR from California. I have an estate account. I just put over 500,000 into it and, it, and was told the funds would be available on 12-9. I went to wire dollars to ITM and was told no. Oh, funds now being held, oh wow, until 12-16. I just got a call from someone in the New York Chase office asking me what my intentions were for the cash. Isn't this interesting? If I left it with them for an additional two months, I would be able to profit approximately $2,000 more. I have never invested through Chase and have never received a call like that from them. Red flags went up. What do you think this means? Well, look, it is only our perception that when we make a deposit into the banks that that money is ours. Legally, when you make that deposit, it's swept below into sub accounts in their names. That was legalized back in 95. And then the banks can really do use that equity to borrow to do whatever they want. So, but what I've also noticed since 2008, even though it's not as overt, but the rules and your ability to remove the funds from your account have been growing more and more and more narrow over that time. Now we are at the end of this cycle. That's what I think this means. And they know that we are at the end of this cycle. We are already walking through the reset. It's just that this is still the slow part. So if you want to call it restructure because that makes you feel better or, you know, more comfortable, that's fine. But the banks don't want to let go of that cash. They want to have the ability to bail it in and especially 500,000, right? So we've got the uh, deposit FDIC insured deposit fund that has three cents to insure every dollar of deposits and then but you're only insured up to 250. So yeah, they would prefer to keep it and continue to use it where they are making money from it. Because if they're telling you you'll make out by another 2000, guess who's making more than that? Presuming all the derivative bets and all the crazy things, the things that they do with that, with that equity, your equity holds true. But yeah, what, what I think that this means is that we are very, very, very near the end. I just have been doing this series on the current Fed financial stability report. And hey, even though they're concerned about debt and leverage in the FDIC insured banks, go back and look at one, two, and three. Four, uh, yeah, four will come after the first of the year then you can see that the banks are really on shaky grounds. Get that money out as quickly as possible. And I think it's total garbage that they're holding it for an additional week all of a sudden. Because with all the computers and all of this, boom, they hit a button. They know those are good funds. Okay. And uh, John C. asks, do we know which consultant this is from? No? Okay. John C. asks, I have been purchasing PCGS, don't scroll too quickly. I have been purchasing PCGS NGC Mint State 65 silver Morgan dollars. The assumption is that they would be safe from confiscation, hopefully. You say that silver is more useful as a tool of barter. Would I be better off buying the non-graded coins? What do you suggest? Um, well, you know, sil silver was confiscated back in 33, but it gets used up in industry. So they could, again, do an over-confiscation of silver. Um, 
and you know nobody's going to know for sure. So if you want to be dead set certain, mint state 65 or or lower quality mint state silver would would most likely um, ensure that you would have that silver. Personally, uh, I do own some mint state 65s, et cetera, silver, but the lion's share of my silver, since as you pointed out, for me, silver is about barterability. Uh, I have a lot of junk silver, so that's pre-1965, so 1964 and earlier, 90% silver, dimes, which is about three quarters, uh, or it's 0 .0715, in gold sil and silver content, et cetera. So dimes, quarters, half dollars, and dollars. Uh, because I'm not really as concerned about confiscation with silver as I am with gold. In gold, I don't do the raw stuff at all or the non-graded. Um, well, I do do some emergency gold and pre-33 gold coins. That's, that's a chunk of my emergency gold. But in that case, most of the gold that I hold is indeed graded. Silver, I have some, but by far, without a doubt, the lion's share is, is not graded. So you have to do whatever you're comfortable with. It's not going to hurt you because you're probably paying way below fundamental value on the silver dollars anyway. So as long as, whether it's gold or silver, as long as you are paying way below its true value, you can't really get hurt. That's one of those, what if I'm right, what if I'm wrong? Um, but personally, while I do have some, I have definitely a lot more that are not graded in terms of silver. And Wendy asks, curious about your thoughts. I've noticed a bombardment of email solicitations offering rewards for filling out surveys. There is a variety of prizes to choose from at decent value. The hook is you have to pay shipping, which includes all personal info and a credit card. There are so many of these offers with the same format that I've become suspicious. Is there a massive central data collection going on? Am I getting paranoid? We are not really getting paranoid. There is and has been a massive data collection on the, in, on the individuals going on because we live in a surveillance economy and that looks to get a lot worse over time. And I don't mean over a million years, I mean even over the short term. And technology has sped everything up so much. Uh, but when you're looking at these kinds of surveys for filling out, I mean, you'd have to look at how much the shipping, et cetera, is. I think that is really more of a ploy to get you to buy a product, even though it doesn't feel like you're buying that product. Uh, I don't ever participate in those because I'm not willing to give out the information. And um, typically the cost of shipping is really primarily the cost of the product. So uh, I don't think this has gotten a lot more to collect the data. Every time you go online, they're collecting data. Every time you buy something online, they're collecting data. Every time you use your credit card or your debit card, they're collecting data. Uh, you know, this is a, every time you get in your car, <laughs> they're collecting data. It doesn't matter whatever you're doing, they're collecting data. Um, and this one's from Keely and her uh, client, Amber. How are the wealthy going to be using the money that will still be in digital dollars to invest? I'm sure they have something cooked up to maximize even this new fiat currency to their advantage in investing. Well, for one thing, the digital dollars are not completely out yet. That's the cryptocurrency's job is to get people comfortable with that. And uh, yeah, when you're looking at the wealthy, really what the wealthy has is information or access to information. So what are those new opportunities going to be? And they're going to have the ability to pay for the research to determine that. But I will tell you what we know about the wealthy and those 
you know, those in the upper echelons, they're buying gold and physical gold and physical silver because they are very well aware of what is happening to the monetary system. And then as we move through this trend cycle, and this is all part of the, the strategy, so I know if you're talking to Keeley or any, any of the consultants here at ITM, then they're talking to you about this. Right now, those assets or those instruments are severely overvalued if it's real estate, if it's an, any income producing asset. But you've got physical gold and silver that are severely undervalued. As we walk through this reset, you will see that flip-flop. So the wealthy know this, and we're going to know when the time is to capture those gains from our growth gold and convert it into those income-producing assets because we're going to be looking for the pattern of the cup formation. And it's not as straight as that. It's going to bounce along the way. And you've seen me show this pattern to you many, many times, but it looks like the bottom of a cup. And when we're somewhere in here, that's when, if you listen to me, I'll tell you what I'm doing. And I will tell you when I'm starting to convert some of my gold holdings into these income producing opportunities. When we see that cup formation, then we're going to know we are somewhere near a bottom and we're going to be accumulating those then undervalued income producing assets. Right now, we're accumulating physical gold and silver. And personally, without a doubt in my mind, the biggest bargain are the collectible gold coins. That's what I buy for myself mostly. I do have some of that emergency gold. But by a wide margin, I do have you know, growth and legacy building gold, which are the more rare, so that I can convert them into those income producing assets when the time is right. But we'll be looking for the patterns to know when that is. And then this is from Martin. Customer asks if Lynette has an opinion on how the new administration may be using platinum for upcoming industrial uses and where the prices may rise. Would it be a good investment option instead of silver or gold? Well, here's how I feel about platinum. Platinum is an industrial metal, and it is definitely a precious metal, and it is even more rare than gold and silver, but it is primarily an industrial metal, and I don't think that the globe has finished going through the contractions that it's going into now. There was definitely a time where platinum was more expensive in terms of fiat dollars than gold and silver. But personally, and I, you know, I have, I certainly have some platinum, but I don't really look at it like an investment because what we're really dealing with here is a currency life cycle issue. Everything has a current, everything has a life cycle. My granddaughter is five. She's at a different point in her life cycle than I am at 66. Or that our wonderful new member Edgar is at 28. He's at a different life point in his life cycle than I am. Well, currencies are no different. We are 100%, I can tell you, without even one little teeny weeny doubt in my mind. We are at the end of this fiat money currencies life cycle. You need to be, well, where I'm most comfortable is focusing on the monetary system and therefore the lion's share of my wealth without any even stretch of the imagination is in gold and then for various purposes and then silver. And silver for me is primarily about barterability because part of the strategy is based upon converting that gold into income producing assets. And you just need way too much silver for the same function. It isn't that you couldn't do it, but what might take one rare gold coin might take a whole room full of silver. That one, that one coin is gonna be much more portable. That makes sense to you. So 
that's it for today. We've got, um, you know, the holidays are coming up and I'm going to take a much needed rest. But I did want to remind you about Section 2022 of the CARES Act that eliminates that 10% early withdrawal penalty if you are under the age of 59 and a half and you withdraw up to $100,000 from your 401k. It also allows you to spread out your income tax liability over three years rather than the same year that you withdraw the money. But that window is closing the end of this year. So I'm not telling you to do it. What I'm telling you is if you are thinking about doing it, you only have a few more days to get that done before that opportunity is gone. And uh, this week I just did, and it was really a lot of fun, a great interview with Jay Bravo. Uh, it was a new station for me, so I didn't know what he was going to ask me, but I have to tell you I had a really good time doing it. And so I hope you will we'll post that on our socials, and hopefully you'll get a chance to see that. Next week is going to be a short week for me, too. So sorry, but I, I haven't had a vacation in, like, years, and I'm... I'm going to take a little vacation. So I'm going to do some more Q&A after this, but I'm wishing everybody, everybody to have healthy, safe, and happy holidays. And if you know somebody that needs your help, it's all part of the community. If you can help, do it. And not just this time of the year. We've got to come together as community to help each other through this. Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.